Uh, Murray, do you want to get us started? Yeah, sorry, couldn't see you there. But um, hey, folks, how are you? How are you guys? How are you? Good, thanks. Um, firstly, boring one. Did everyone train okay today? No late scares. No. Um. All all well. Um. Finish. Yeah, good captain run. Uh, all very excited. What's the mindset of the team like going over this time? Given that you've had good form, you've had some big wins this season. And I'm surely a bit of confidence off the back of that. Yeah, it's good. Um, I think I think that I think the, le- the there's been some lessons learned from our last away trip, um, and I think I think the, the squad feel comfortable um, in how we've approached this week, um, and we're, we're mentally in a really good space. Um, we've trained quite well during the week, um, nice and cohesive. We're, we're a good few weeks down the line, so yeah, it's been a good week and. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to start well tomorrow. Did you see? And what, so, what did you make of Eddie Jones's comments that Ireland won't have seen a team as physical as England? Yeah, I, di- I didn't. I don't really. I, did, I don't really look too too closely. Um, uh, we've prepared quite well. You know, we've prepared quite well this week, um, and that's really it. Um, that's really it. We, we're focused. We're fully focused on on what we need to do. Um, I think we're very clear in in. in what the challenge is when you come to Twickenham, um, and, and it is a challenge. But we're, yeah, we're very clear on, on what we need to do. And physicality is something that we've addressed during the week. So um, yeah, we're good. Can I ask just what changes will Andrew Porter miss and, and with Keane coming in and, and Dave to, to back him up there? What do you expect to see from those two guys? Oh, uh, look, we, we, you know, we're we're so lucky, really, aren't we? Um, Andrew Andrew is transitioning. Or he's developing into into a, into a, into an excellent loose head, um, and we've got a guy with over a hundred caps to come in, and um, because he's not here, um, Andrew certainly brings uh, his own pieces. But Keane Keane has an X factor to his game too. And look, Keane's a massive handful. Um, he's got a huge amount of experience in what he does at scrum time. Um, he, he understands the challenge. He's been here before. He, he's done it a couple of times. Um, he's now in a in a part of his career where he's where he's really competing hard with with the lads that you just mentioned, and so there's a competitive edge to what he's doing at the moment, which is which is really really good for him. And you know, I'm seeing that during the week, and I'm hoping that you know he's had a good week that we see that tomorrow from him, competitive. We see all that we see all that experience that he that he's gotten. We see that hopefully we'll see that tomorrow, and we'll see him deliver that with energy, um, and, and and obviously then. Um, Desi as well, or killer off the bench, um, huge energy, um, again incredibly, incredibly experienced. Again, we've we've got lots of experience there, so um, excited to see how he can add value, add energy. Um, the the two of those guys are are, are primed, um, and looking forward to tomorrow. Finally, just can I ask about Finley Beelham because obviously Ty gets so many deserved headlines, a lot of folks on him. How has Finley been going? behind because he has a big job to do as well I guess yeah I think I think over the last over the last 18 months or so he's he's adjusted small parts of his game you see in his carry he's he's nice and square in how he carries uh, he's always got a change up um, and he he's he's got some impact same same thing with his defense and his tackle and and um, that, they're the things that that he's been asked for from the coaches and he, he's delivered upon and for, for me in the scrum and for him to be a bit more compact, so he can so he can stay in the fight a bit longer. Again, he's made adjustments, um, and, that, and that's impressive to see. You know, he, he he didn't double down on what 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 he's been doing. He's made adjustments along the way. Understands what the challenge is again. Understands what the coaches need, and makes adjustments. Um, he's been really competitive during the week. And again, like I said, um, looking forward to seeing to seeing him off the bench because he can bring that impact um, and energy off off the off the bench, and perhaps we'll need that. Thanks very much, John. Go well. Thank you, Murray. John, how are things? It's Bernard here at Virgin Media. Hey, Bernard, how are you? Good. John, um, Eddie Jones said this week Ireland are favourites tomorrow. Would you agree? <laughs> Look, everyone, you you plan you plan for a really good start. You plan for the lads to be to be nice and calm and deliver. Um, and until you get a punch in the nose, you're not quite sure how it's going to go. So. Um, Let's just see how we go tomorrow. We've we've had a really good week. Um, like I said earlier, we, we've we've come through a few games. Um, uh, win or lose, we've taken learnings from those games, and I think that we're in a really good we're in a good space um, to be able to start this game tomorrow. 
Um, how we react uh, throughout the game will be so important. Um, but we're in a really good place to start the game tomorrow. Um, so we're hoping to, to put out a, a good performance, like I said, on the back of a good start. On that performance, do Ireland need their best performance of the Six Nations so far to get the job done tomorrow? Um, I think we need to take the learnings, and I know, I know I've said this a few times, I think we need to take the learnings and, and need to stay um, need to stay nice and calm. How, how you react, you know, any team is going to have a purple patch. And I guess acknowledging that, that it's happening and being able to react um, and, to, and to, to, bring, to bring, the, bring each other back on track um, is really, really important. And I think that's one of the key learnings from us uh, as we've gotten through the tournament. Um, and as I said, I think we're in, a good, we're in a good place with that. So we'll see tomorrow. Um, like I said, we've had a very good weekend and we're looking forward to it. Great stuff. Best of luck. Thank you. Hey, John, how's it going? Um, John, James Ryan was talking about the verbals from the English pack. And it's been noticeable over the last few matches that when they've got on the front foot or they're celebrating a knock on or a scrum penalty, it's really, really loud. It seems to be a tactic. From your experience or talking to the lads, does that affect Ireland negatively? Like, is it possible to ignore that? Because they seem to be very good at it. They think it's a, something that's useful to them. But what's your take on it? Yeah, you'd have seen that over the years. Saracens certainly have used that over the, you know, when they were, when they were at the top. Um, and some of their players to deliver a lot of that. I think that you're trying to create your own energy and um, celebrate the small wins. Um, I think I think initially, a couple of years ago, that may be something that, that would have bothered uh, some of the lads. But I, I think, like I said, learning from it, understanding understanding what it's for, what, what they're using it for, um, not not to let it not to let it affect you and expect it. Um, you know, then you kind of take the power away from it. Um, you know, it's important that we're not letting them have big moments. Um, but, you know, the hooping and the hollering when they have big moments, I don't think it has the same impact. Um, yeah. Thanks, John. Best of luck. Thank you. Hi, John. Ed Elliott at PA. How are you? Yeah. Uh, it's come out of the England camp this morning that Mario Adoje is a doubt for the game because of illness. Um, what, what strengths does he bring to England and, and how big a blow would he be? Um, how big a blow would it be if he doesn't make it? Or yeah, look, he's... Um, He's another experienced player. He he, he you know, he's um he's a difficult character to deal with because he's so involved. Um, he's so involved and he he tries to he tries to have lots of involvements in the game. So um, he's a huge strength of theirs. Um, he's a nuisance at times. Um, but 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 he's yeah he's excellent. Um, he would be a loss of course. Um, they've got they've got some strength and depth, and they've got some size. Launchbury's another. He's an excellent player. He's got lots of experience um, and, and adds a different something different as well. But sure, he'd sure he'd be he'd be a loss. Um, let's let's hope he's uh, let's hope he's all right. And, and does that affect your preparations when when there's sort of uncertainty there over over there starting fifteen? Um, not not really, not really. Um, I think at this stage now. Um, you know our plan, what our plan is, how we want to put it out there. Um, it's not going to affect us at this stage. Um, um, that that happens from time to time. Players drop out. It, it won't have a major impact on on how we're preparing to, to start tomorrow. Um, you know. So yeah. Thanks. That's a lot. Cheers. Thank you. Okay, guys. If we're happy enough from a live perspective, we'll take a couple of. Um Embargoed questions there. Peter, you had one there? Yeah. Hi, John. Hey, Peter. Um, uh, you've uh, you scrummed down, you've packed down with Keane uh, through the years and all that. Uh, I was talking to Mike Ross earlier on, <clears throat> and he reckons that uh, Keane will have to be retired, that he won't actively retire himself. Does that, does that chime with your experience of where he's at mentally?